And welcome into Press Box Live. And I want to tell you on this Monday evening that we are brought to you by C3 American Exteriors. Ross Grimsley and my co host and I are going to welcome Mike Bordick in just a second. But I do have to tell you a little bit about our sponsor, C3 American Exteriors. Go to their website at c3america.com to get a brand new roof for just the cost of your insurance deductible. There is no greater cost that you might incur on your home than the roof. And that is a very important piece of business for you homeowners out there. So go to C3America.com now to get a free roof inspection. I know these guys. I trust these guys. And I like these guys. C3 American Exteriors. Speaking of knowing and liking guys, I like Ross Grimsley and I like our co-host, our guest tonight, co-host Ross Grimsley, Mike Bordick. Mike, how are you? Hey, I'm good, Stan. How you doing, man? All right. How's your baseball season hey, hey, going? We, we, so miss, we, miss, we miss hearing you and seeing you on Oriole baseball. How's your baseball season going so far? Oh, it's been going awesome, man. I've been getting to watch my boys play, uh, my two younger boys. So, getting to follow them a little bit more, uh, help them along. I'm also giving some lessons and stuff uh, recently over at the baseball warehouse. So that's been, been a lot of fun as well. So getting it, uh, you know, stay with the kids, uh, help promote the game of baseball and getting out and talking to parents. I think, especially this spring, Stan, it's been so exciting to actually get back outdoors, you know, especially after the long COVID and, and kind of re-energize kids and parents alike to keep uh, keep with the program with sports and baseball, especially. Are you keeping up with the Orioles this season or have they fallen off of your radar? <laughs> no, I'm def- I got to keep up with the Orioles. Of course I am. <laughs> yeah. And, and uh, we all do. That, that the pitching picks up a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you hope that the pitching can pick up a little bit, you know, man, oh man, it's going to be a tough one. Yeah, well, I did a, a little write up with my baseball power rankings. You know, in the American League East, three of the top five teams in all of baseball in my power rankings are in the American League East Boston, New York, and Tampa are three, four, and five. And I just looked at how much those teams are spending on pitching, Ross and Mike. Yankees are spending $100 million on pitching. The Red Sox have a payroll of about $56 million on pitching. Tampa has about 27 million. The Orioles have $10 million allotted to pitching. So you get the old expression to a certain extent holds true. You get what you pay for, right, Ross? Exactly right. That's exactly, (laughs) those other teams want to win. They're (laughs) they're gonna go out and spend money basically, you know, if you have to, you know, now if this this, uh, rebuild goes according to plan and obviously it's been set back a couple of years. Yeah. So I mean, hopefully the, the pitching and, and you're seeing now the hitting is catching up to the pitching. The pitching was ahead of it when the season started. And now you're seeing some games 19 to 1, 20 to something, you know. So I think that the, the, the pitchers are going to have yeah. to make adjustments, oh. have to make adjustments. I heard a stat today and then I'll let Ross ask you a couple of questions, Mike. You know, the Yankees, they've got that hundred million dollars. You know that they now have 35 consecutive innings by their starting pitchers of shutout ball. It's the longest in the big leagues. And I think 20, 20, 25 years, I forget what team I just heard it today had 47 shutout innings. It was the Washington nationals about four years ago, actually not 20 years ago. It was about four or five years ago. That's pretty remarkable that the Yankees starting pitching is pitching that well. Well, yeah. Oh, I agree. Questions. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Yeah, no, yeah, that, exactly. I mean, they, they started up when we saw them uh, early in the season. Their pitching staff was a little questionable, and a lot of people were talking about it. But they have done some things, and uh, you know, and uh, 
you knew they were going to be in the thick of things. And Boston has been, you know, not really a surprise. Tampa Bay has been doing well. Toronto is, is, is as well has done well. But the pitching on all these teams are the thing that's going to get them uh, to where they're trying to get to. All right, your turn to ask a couple of questions of our yeah, guests. Yeah, I'm a little interested. Yeah, go ahead, Mike. We must have a little delay going Yeah, I was just on. interested in, like, starting pitching. Yeah, starting pitching in general is, uh, you know, if you can get starters starting pitching to go, you know, five innings, I, I think it's a success, <laughs> right? Just five. Um, yeah. <laughs> let alone just shutout innings, <laughs> you know. Yeah, I, I, that just seems the way it's gone. You know, I, I think we all of a sudden, you know, started specializing, um, you know, with the, the closer and the setup man. And then you got your three guys lined up and it just keeps cutting back the innings of the starting pitcher. And now it's just rare that somebody can last a complete game. And, and we're just making, you know, it's unfortunate that, that starters can't get deeper into ball games and, and the Orioles, that's what they need. Just somebody to eat up some innings there on the front side. You know, it's, it's funny, Ross and Mike, but I guess the complete games, you have to be pitching a no hitter to, to finish the, to finish the ball game. I more and more, I see pitchers taken out after five innings. And Mike, I guess my question is, is that part and parcel of having had that shortened season? They want to really make sure that they watch innings on pitchers the first two, three months of this season and maybe crank up a few more innings the second half of the year. I don't know. I don't know if that's the philosophy. I mean, I think that's a pretty easy one to say. Yeah, they're yeah. thinking about that. But honest to God, I think everybody is afraid of a starting pitcher going through a lineup the third time. Yep. They just think that that's going to be the end of it. So they run in, you know, their whole their bullpen. And, and it's unfortunate because now I think guys are even programmed to, you know, once you go through that lineup, they let down. They're not even yep. trained mentally to attack that lineup the third time through. That's it's interesting. Which is unfortunate, I think. It's interesting you observe it that way, that it's more fully ingrained in the game. That seemed to be the postseason thing that they're very careful about anybody pitching a third time around. Ross, go ahead. Well, you, you watch, you know, you, you watch the games now, and like you said, the pitchers go four or five innings. And by the time, I mean, it's like they got the Oriole bullpen now. They've taken their beating a little, little bit. And after a while, if these guys don't get them deep in the games every now and then, your bullpen gets taxed, gets wore out. And just a few years ago, you had several of the top relievers were all on a disabled list because they were overused. Because, I mean, they keep running them out. You keep bringing guys up from the – a yeah. guy will go out and pitch a good game out of the bullpen, pitch three or four innings, they send him down. And they bring a new arm up, and you, you see more of that. But I think your starters, they don't know how to pitch – you know, like Mike said, they, they don't know how to pitch after the – even to the third time. They've never had that opportunity because they've taken them out. Now you, you give them an opportunity, and they don't know what to do. The catchers don't know what to call. They're busy looking at in their hats for the card that tells them whatever they're telling them to do, you know. But you see that, and you go, well, no wonder it's the way it is, you know. So hopefully yeah. starting pitching will get them deeper into games, uh, you know, all around baseball, I think. And, and save the bullpen a little bit and save some injuries. It, it's interesting. I was watching the game Saturday. Well, I watched just about yeah, I, You know what, Ross? Go and, and Stan. Go ahead, Mike. We've got. No, our... I'm just thinking. Yeah. I'm... Yeah, there's a little delay. Sorry about yeah. that, Stan. That's all right. Well, no, we'll... I, I'm just saying, I don't, I don't know if it's ever going to really be able to go back. I just don't see organizations spending the time to actually develop starting pitchers. I, I think it's going to be a rare commodity. And I think if you have somebody like that, they're just going to be real careful with them. Um, you know, I, I just think it's leading to just a more bullpen type of game anyway. And I think the league is going to have to do something to kind of structure it so that there are more arms available to be honest with you, it, because I, unfortunately, I think they're putting too many pitchers in harm's way. I, I just don't think it's fair what they're, right. what they're trying to do. Do you think there could be, Mike, you were a member of the Players Association, as Ross was when you played. 
do you think it, it even boils down when you look at a team like Tampa, how, how Kevin Cash now makes sure he doesn't have a real set closer that can earn big money. He's spreading the saves all around to Castillo when Nick Anderson's healthy to Peter Fairbanks. Could it be as sort of maniacal as that, that we want to keep these guys, nobody getting more than nine to 13 saves instead of having one guy that's going to make big money? Hmm. I agree. That's I, pretty I think, interesting. Yeah. I, yeah. Go, go, go ahead, Mike. I, go I ahead, think Ross. It is. Yeah. But no, I, I see that. I think analytically, <laughs> analytically, analytically, they found a way to uh, skew the stats to where to, I think to suppress these salaries. I, I really, they, they can skew it the way they want to, you know? And so doing what you're saying, it's hard to keep a team together uh, for a number of years without having to pay a, an exorbitant amount of money. And that, that's, they just can't, they never would have been able to keep the big red machine together or the Yankees back then or Oakland. They couldn't have ever done that now because they're too much money. And I think they found a way to do that and is that that's kind of wise in a way, but still, I want to be if I'm the closure, I want to be out there every day. There's a game on the line. You know? Darn right. Yep. Yeah. So I can I can make my make my money and win. You know, that's the big thing is getting to the playoff, the World Series. Well, I'm watching Tampa carefully, and it's amazing. They just made that trade where everybody assumed they were making way for Wander Franco, the number one prospect in all of baseball, to come in and play shortstop. And then they shocked the hell out of everybody by bringing up this other kid who's a little bit older, who plays a great defensive shortstop like Mike Bordick, Taylor Walls. I don't know if you know him, Mike, or not, but boy, he's a really solid defender. No, no. The switch hitter and a, and a kid who played at Florida or Florida State, one of those two teams, he's really looking good so far. But uh, I watch them very carefully, Tampa, because I play fantasy baseball. They really, he, he's, Kevin Cash is a, a master of not letting anybody get too, too high or uh, making too much money. He's a master at it. Mike, I did want to ask you. <laughs> well, I don't know if it's Kevin Cash or if it, it's up above front office. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? I think, yeah, I thought, I think Kevin, and that was kind of shown in the World Series, right? So yeah. I think Kevin is a great motivator of his players. I think he keeps them all on an even keel and probably has to settle down a lot of the, the players that come in to say, listen, this is how we do it here in Tampa. You know, yeah. you're going to yeah. be moved around a little bit, but we've got a great winning formula. You know, we're gonna, we made it to the World Series last year. So, you know, if you want to win – Come on with us. If not, right. you can get the heck out, right? Get, a, get on board or leave. A lot of people on the same page right now. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. There's no quite winning. Yeah. Yeah, the, absolutely. Winning cures a lot of evils. There's no question about that. And everybody's, nobody's going to rock the boat there. And if you do, and you're about to make money like Blake Snell, you get dealt. There's no question about it. Speaking of Kevin Cash, Mike Bordick, I wanted to ask you a little bit about, and I know you just did our, <laughs> yes. our radio show with Glenn Clark the other day, and were asked about Tony La Russa. Uh, what are you making uh, of uh, Tony's return to Major League Baseball? Well, uh, I think it's great, to be honest with you. I mean, I love Tony. I, I respect him so much. Hall of Fame manager. He's had so much incredible success in the game. And... Uh, you know, he's been involved in the game. He's moved around a lot to help organizations out. And uh, I thought it was pretty interesting how things went down there uh, in Chicago with that home run on a blowout game. And, uh, you know, I'm going to support Tony. And although he did something that kind of caught me off guard a little bit by taking it to the media. He isn't typically, he never was the manager that would take things to the media first. If a player did, then he would jump on and bury a player in the media, but he typically wouldn't use the media to send a message. Uh, so that kind of caught me, but I know in that, you know, interview I did, I, I kind of look at it. There's so much social media now 
that he probably wanted to get ahead of it and say, listen, right. this is my team. This is what I don't like about it. And just kind of send the message that way. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. I'm watching him and, and I, nobody was a bigger appreciator of Tony La Russa as a manager and a skilled, I, I think we'd all agree that he was kind of the guy who reinvented the modern day bullpen to do what a lot of managers used to do, which is, you know, matching up lefties against lefties, but he had the, the right ability to do that. And I just watch him today. It's to me, it's not the same guy. Uh, he seems very slow on the draw uh, at making the moves that he, that were like second nature to him. You know, the guy hasn't managed a baseball game until, you know, for 11 years until he came back this year. Well, it, it, it's a brand new game, Stan. I mean, it, it's the way the game's played now. I mean, and like I said, the media, the media's on it. And, and he's got players that, uh, you know, this is the way I play and I'm not going to change. You know, that's a rookie saying that. You know, can, can you imagine that? I mean, yeah. you've got guys, so I, I just – I'm, I'm pulling for him. I'm rooting for him. And, and I just hope that, uh, that they continue to win over there, but it's uh, some of the stuff that goes on, you know, and I, I just, I'm amazed that he even came back and put himself through this, you know, that's a, I don't know how, yeah. uh, how he could do that, but I mean, that, that's anyway, if, but if these guys would just listen, I mean, God, he's got a record, uh, you know, a, a past, that success if they would just let, listen and do some of this stuff. And, and it gets down, you know, you talk about the unwritten rules of baseball. It, it, these are things that players set for themselves and each other. It's not for the fans. It's not for the media. It's not, they, they, they set these rules up not to embarrass, humiliate, or show up the other, the other team, you know, show a little sportsmanship and respect. But in this day and age, for me, they want to embarrass, humiliate, and show up the other team they don't give a rat's butt they just don't care and that's not the way it's supposed to be it's not the way I, it's not the way i learned you know and, and i, well, I don't played. you think don't you think a team is already embarrassed enough when they have to bring out williams as studio to pitch in the eighth or ninth inning i to me i'm not getting bent out of shape that he swung at a 3-0 pitch from williams as studio but it's, why <laughs> well my, my question is why they, you just want to get the game over, you know, right. and, and, at that point in time. And you know what? That, that's like, and, and even growing up in high school, we're, be, we're beating a team a hundred in basketball, beating a team a hundred to twenty. You take out toward the, you take out your best, your the usually players, and, and put them, the other guys in. Football the same way. Baseball it's always been that way. But now all of a sudden, no, let's. You know, we're, we'll put my grandmother out there on a the mound. It's 3-0 and just swing for the fences. Why don't you steal bases too? You know, and there's, I mean, you got to draw the line. There's, like I said, why humiliate and embarrass the other team? You don't have to do that. But now in this day, it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. It's expected. Let, let's run these numbers up. Let's get these numbers up. And this uh, hit a home run 3-0. That, that's just like, it's just I, like rubbing your face in it. I, I don't believe it. I, don't, I think it's wrong, but that's just me. Mike, I just want to ask you this because I know you'd you'd love to manage a big league club at some point in time, and I know you think along with managers. Yesterday, Yankees were leading four to three with Chapman on the mound in the ninth inning, and Andrew Vaughn hits a solo home run to tie the game up. And who starts the inning? The same pitcher that had pitched the eighth inning, Aaron Bummer, comes in. You use the number one relief pitcher in baseball comes into that game with the bases loaded and no outs in the bottom of the ninth inning. And what did Liam Hendricks do? He walked Aaron judge. Why would, do you think that's a case that he did not have Liam Hendricks up warm just in case he tied the game or went ahead? Isn't that the, the obvious reason he did that? I guess so. I mean, I, I don't know. I wish I would have seen that and witnessed it. You know, it's really bizarre, honestly. Uh, I, I am scratching my head literally every night watching baseball games because 
<laughs> I don't know. First of all, yeah, I just don't know. Is it the analytics that's making that move or is it the manager's gut telling him to make the move? And sometimes I just, I don't know, man. And, and even, I don't even know. I'm caught off. I see guys getting thrown out at third base now all the time. And I'm going, is that an analytic yeah. thing? Cause it's so bad that it looks like they're almost doing it because somebody's telling them to do it. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm having a hard time keeping up with some of the moves, the strategies in the game right now. So yeah, it's really interesting. A lot of head scratchers uh, going on in the game of baseball. I, I want to, Mike, Mike, I got to, I got to, I got to ask you, I got to tell you something. I, I, I call a friend of mine that I played with, with the Reds just happened to be the all time hits leader. So anyway, I'm talking to him and he goes, <laughs> He didn't call me Grimms. He calls me another name. But anyway, he goes, can you watch baseball now? I went, it's very hard to do. Well, I can't wait. I'm going to see him out in Vegas. I'm going to Vegas Thursday. Me and my wife meet some friends out there. We're going to see him. I can't wait to talk to him nice. about this. But he goes, oh, man. can you actually watch the game? I'm going, yeah, <laughs> but no, it's awful. It can be very bad at times. <laughs> But that's yeah. like it's, it's tough to watch. And it, it's fun sitting there. It's criticized. tough to listen to some of the announcers. Very tough to listen to some of the announcers now. I'm just mind boggled at times. I watch a lot of games all over, and the two best analysts I hear are yeah. Steve Stone, who pitched for the Orioles yep. for a couple of years, and Palmer is still very good. I like Ben. I like Ben too. Ben yeah. does a good job. Yeah. Ben does a good job. Uh, Forty. I yeah. got to ask you one of the yeah, players that I'm sure, good. I'm sure you observed over the past couple yeah. of years was this left-handed pitcher for the Orioles, number forty-seven. He's going against everything we've talked about tonight. Uh, John Means. Uh, did you see this coming uh, the past couple of years with him, where he's going to have a breakout and be like an ace? Well, no, I didn't, I didn't think that he was going to break of this. You can never underestimate hard work. And, yep. and I think that's an intangible that a lot of people overlook. And John means from day one, man, his focus, his commitment to making himself better really stood out. Now, can you ever put like a number? Oh, yeah, he's working so hard. He's going to be a number one. It takes right. incredible focus mentally to do it, too, and understanding who you are as a pitcher. And I think Means has gone through a lot of stuff to learn the process of becoming a quality major league pitcher. And I think he's locked into it right now. He's got a nice rhythm. He feels good about all of his pitches. He has incredible confidence, too. And, you know, <laughs> Ross, you got to have confidence to play at the highest level. And sometimes you even got to trick yourself. But he has some great <laughs> tools, man. Yes, and that change-up fastball combination is devastating. Bordy, um, I, yeah. I wonder what you think the analytics did because Chris Holt, was sort of the guy I think that changed him a little bit and got him thinking a different way and using the change up more. And he kind of taught him a new release on a change up. Do you think the analytics have helped make John means what he is today as much as the hard work too? You know, I think the analytics have helped a lot of players get better. I, I really do. And I think a player like John means not only, like physically will make himself bigger and stronger and working in a bullpen, repeat his delivery over and over again, but he will look at his hand position, his release point to try to maximize maybe a, a way to delay on like uh, rotations per minute. I think he's looking at deception. I think he's looking at consistency. Mm -hmm. And I think he's also looking at, what he can do to maybe manipulate that change up a little bit to have it fade a little more. I think he's that kind of student of the game. And I think the best players should kind of look at analytics that way, yeah. not, not get so caught up in it that it just blinds you to being an athlete that you are, but use it to benefit, you know, your game to make yourself better in that regard. And I think it takes a 
a quality professional to actually sift through and find out what actually works for them in that analytic field. Excellent point. Excellent point. Uh, Mike, I wanted to take a second and t- talk a little bit about something near and dear to your heart. I know you're teaching the ba- doing some baseball lessons at Baseball Warehouse, but you are very involved with the League of Dreams. Yeah. Their mission statement, I took this off of their website, which is leagueofdreams.org. The mission of League of Dreams is to provide all individuals, regardless of physical or mental ability, the opportunity to experience the joy, challenges, and personal growth from playing the great games of baseball and softball. Tell us a little bit about what brought you to League of Dreams and what touches you about their mission. (laughs) Yeah, it's awesome. So it's a, it's a, it's a mom and pop backyard uh, program that was started right here in Catonsville, Maryland. Frank Kalerick is the founder and president and you guys know his son, uh, Adam Kalerick, who pitches for the Uh, Oakland A's right now won a World Series ring and I think he just got his World Series ring from the Dodgers the other day but pitched right there in Maryland so uh, yeah he started this program like 16 years ago Um, I was privileged enough to be asked to help out at one of his clinics and now I'm the uh, uh, the chairman uh, of the League of Dreams we've got involved with a couple amazing sponsors uh, the Children's Guild right here in Baltimore, it it really uh, hosts the mid mid Atlantic and it takes care of, you know, kids that have gone through the rigors of parents uh, incarcerated, uh, you know, growing up in poverty, uh, the mental and health problems that kids go through. And we get to offer them opportunities to get out on a baseball field and, and play some baseball and softball. It is just so amazing. We also help kids, you know, with all special needs. You could be in a wheelchair, autistic. We do camps over at the Maryland School for the Blind. It's really amazing. And I think what really sets us apart is not only like any kid can have an opportunity to come out and play, but we have, uh, you know, our volunteers are typically a baseball team, a high school baseball team. We went into the University of Maryland and their baseball team were the volunteers. So the players get a perspective, another perspective, and get to see, you know, uh, the light of the eye of this kid that, that might be in a wheelchair and just now feeling part of a team. And it impacts them, the volunteers, so much as well. So they can take that in the community and respond better, you know, in, in certain situations and actually, you know, support their peers. And I think now more than ever, you know, after being locked up for a year, these kids need to get outside, enjoy right. the sport. And, and we need to show how much we care about them. It's an awesome program. And we're lucky to have the Cal Ripken Senior Foundation as another incredible sponsor. They do so much for the kids. They've made the uh, wheelchair accessible fields all over the country. And we are looking to put kids on those fields every day. So it's an exciting uh, time for the League of Dreams. We're excited about baseball season being back around and getting our kids back out on the field. Is the Mike, best, doesn't is uh, the, Major League Baseball, are they, they're involved in this at some point, aren't they? Along with, the, I think, the U.S. Army. Well, like we, we have, yeah, we've had the alumni out to help. And, uh, yeah, we're looking to expand. Listen, it is beautiful right here in our backyard, but this can happen in the backyard of somebody in Ohio and California, anywhere. You know, kids – all kids need to get out and play. Uh, kids with special needs, our kids. It is so healthy mentally for kids to be out in the sun and enjoying that. You know, not only to teach kids uh, baseball, I get to talk to parents and kids about the special joy it is just to get outside and play, not to right. eat to say win but to enjoy the game, the way it's supposed to be played, right? Uh, And, and, you know, you get back to that respect thing. That is the foundation of the game. That's where we learned. How do you, you honor your teammate. You're not a sore loser. You know, you pick them up if you knock them down. You respect your opponent. And that's, that's the foundation of it, the beauty of true sport, man. And, and, you know, I, I think more managers and more teams, to really support sportsmanship the right way to go about the game, you know, and play 
the play so that when kids watch it, they learn the right way to do things. I mean, I, you can have so much a positive impact, you know, by doing things the right way. Mike, let me ask you this before we close this out. If, if somebody out there is listening and, and is, is heard the name, they want information, I, th- I think you can go to a Facebook page under League of Dreams and read a little bit, but leagueofdreams.org is the website, correct? Yeah, absolutely. Leagueofdreams.org, and we're uh, constantly – uh, improving the state. I'm trying to start, uh, Frank Kalarik and I are trying to start a podcast um, for the, through the League of Dreams. We have a more, I talked to Jeff Rebelay the other day, um, Dr. Dave McDuff, who I think is so important nowadays in, in the mental health. And I'm really looking forward to, uh, I have an interview with Brooks Robinson. So you know, hopefully we get some great baseball and it was in there and people can visit the league of dreams.org and, and, you know, here's some awesome. Boy, just as we're about to close this out, Trevor Larnich just hit blasted a fastball by John means. I think it's 460 feet to dead center field at target field. The uh, game is tied at oh, one apiece. Uh, I'll break in to say that. Well, Mike, we really appreciate you're doing this. <laughs> with us leagueofdreams.org is the way to go and we'll uh we'll have you on again to talk more about this all right since you're so uh pumped up about this and passionate about it it sounds like a great uh mission yeah. here yeah thank you so much thanks for having me stan ross good to see you guys all miss right. you guys great buddy all thank right. you thank you mike really appreciate it Want to let you know that, again, Press Box Live is brought to you by C3 American Exteriors. Go to their website at c3america.com to get a brand new roof for just the cost of your insurance deductible. These are guys I know, I trust, and I like. And again, I always say it on every show that at the end of the day, there's no greater expense you might incur when you're home than fixing or putting a new roof on your home. You got to go with the best. C3 American Exteriors. For Mike Bordick, Ross Grimsley, I'm Stan the Fan. And Wednesday night, Gary Stein and I will be on with uh, head coach of the Towson football team. That is Rob Ambrose. Good night, everybody. See you down Thanks, the road. Mike. See you, Mike.